Welcome back here with Money, Money, Money. And this week we're talking about how to make a will, extremely important legal document that you need to have in place. Uh, all right, so Karthik, let's talk about you know the the processes and just the starting point. Uh, I believe that even if you write uh, your will on a simple piece of paper, it does have some legal sanctity to it. Oh, it has absolute legal sanctity. Mm -hmm. Not only that, you do not even have to worry about being a legal expert in terms of a legal language. Mm -hmm. So, you can write in a common man's language. Okay. This is, uh, I am so and so, identify yourself well. Mm -hmm. This is my PAN number, this is where I live, so on and so forth. Uh, as my parents talk about your family if you'd like to then you can start talking about your estate whatever you have mm -hmm. whatever you own and how you'd like to distribute it a very important thing however to uh, mention in your will is you have to appoint somebody who will represent you okay. that person technically is called the executor in the legal parlance so you have to appoint you know somebody obviously who's much younger than you who will of course outlive you mm. so you don't do it uh, you know you don't nominate you don't put your uncle as the executor or somebody who's mm. older to you you put somebody mm. much younger and you say that this person will be my executor mm -hmm. and he will go and represent me and get the probate of the will and all of that done and basically he will step into my shoes because I'm not there anymore mm -hmm. and do whatever I would do as, as if I was alive so simple piece of paper you can handwrite it if you don't have one you could go home today do it and you can have a will straight away quick question so this person the executor that you're going to appoint yes uh, is he typically from the family should he be from the family should he be an external person to ensure that the will is executed properly and in the rightful spirit absolutely so very often what happens is the executor is normally one of the child or two of them together so that there is no fight and both of them have to sign to get the you know documentation done okay. it could however be a completely third person mm -hmm. that you might want to trust uh, it could also be a firm it could be somebody else also you know like a trustee or a guardian who would a guardian of the family who would come and you know a friend of the family a well-wisher it could be just about anybody really speaking okay. but very often popularly people put their children or you know likelihood that the inheritors will themselves be the executors because mm -hmm. the executor also has to spend money mm -hmm. and to get the legal clearance from the court to say that yes this will is valid there is no dispute here's the certificate go ahead distribute the well you know? okay so that brings me to the next step uh, Karthik just mentioned that the executor will have to go to the court and get uh, the validity yes to this piece of document right, right? Uh, even though it's not registered, so then my next question would be that: Do you need to register this this handwritten or whatever this typed out piece of uh, yeah. document? You know, uh, so be the number of disputes. You know, I would say if you see the number of wills that are written, there's a very high proportion of the number of wills that get into dispute. Mm -hmm. So one would need to be careful about that. Registration is not mandatory because, you know, once a will is written, it always, several of them get challenged whether it is forged, whether the man who wrote the will was in his right state of mind and all that stuff. So it is important to put as many levels of protection as possible to make it as authentic, as, you know, dispute free as possible. What, what are these levels of protection? So, you know, uh, uh, let's say uh, uh, as things get modern, stakes get high, we see a lot of people who want to record the will uh, in camera. Okay. So, so there's a camera proceeding. Most of the families do that. Mm -hmm. So, you know, then you attach a medical certificate from that a... That you're of sane mind. Sane mind, because that's the first will. thing people will yeah. say that, look, yeah, yeah. Uh, it was caused and uh, mm -hmm. influenced. So mm -hmm. these are some of the protection. Law requires uh, you to have two witnesses mm -hmm. on the will uh, who, will, uh, who don't necessarily need to know the content of the will, mm -hmm. but they need to certify. Uh, that it has been prepared in my presence. So these are some of the protections you need to be mindful of. Mm -hmm. Registration is another level, uh, another way of doing it because the document becomes public once you have registered, but it's not mandatory. Does it add any additional layer of, you know, safety, so to speak? I mean, is there any merit in going through the registration process? You know, I would, I would answer that question to say there are better okay. things one can do. Okay. And uh, uh, perhaps, uh, you know, I would say that there are many better things uh, that one could do to make it foolproof to ensure that disputes are, uh, mm -hmm. uh, do not happen. One could be, you know, you discuss it with your family. Mm -hmm. And if I can stretch that more, most of the disputes you'll see, and, you know, there's an example that a person dies, he leaves behind hundreds of crores of rupees, yeah. but he gives one son, let's say, 50 crores, the other son, 50 crore, 20 lakh. Yeah. So that 20 lakh becomes the point of all heartbreak and pain that did my father love him more and all yeah, that stuff and yeah, you know yeah. we're <laughs> emotional people, people here in yeah. India actually you know exactly. money is an emotional exactly. subject for, for exactly. sure exactly. Karthik uh, what do you tell people you know when people come to you with these kind of questions how to ensure uh, that this will or this legal document has as much sanctity as possible so it cannot be drawn into conflict 
a lot of times we forget to make these little nominations or registrations yeah. and things like that. So what you do is, as you make investments, as you build your wealth, as you build your portfolio, now all of this applies to everything except uh, real estate. So we'll talk about real estate in just mm -hmm. a bit. But everything else could be done in a manner by which you have joint holdings, joint accounts and everything. So what happens is, if I had intended to give this to my son, at some point of time, get my son to become a joint holder on that investment or get him into a joint holding of that bank account. So basically when that investment is sold, automatically the money is in the bank account, it belongs to both of them. Okay. So at least to a large extent, you've resolved any heartbreak. So in the will, I completely agree with him when he said that, you know, the family should know. Mm. Now for real estate, of course, nomination is one thing yeah, the but society will do. But before I get to real estate, I have a quick follow-up question on the process of registration itself. And I know if you could just clarify this, uh, is it same across India? Are there any sort of uh, state level duties or you know state level taxes that will also apply? Uh, I mean, is there any uh, any sort of change in this document because of the federal nature of our country? No, I think uh, mm -hmm. uh, it's largely the same, and registration mm -hmm. is a very simple process. Just that you know, it's a painful process because what we've seen that people continue to change their mind. Mm -hmm. You know, while you're 40, you want to give it every all your wealth to somebody. When you're 50, there <laughs> are more participants. When you're yeah. 60, you may have more participants. So if, if you've made a registration, you need to go back to the registrar's office. Okay. and change it every time okay. and you know that's uh, we are not too much I'm generally not too much okay. in favor of registration if you've done the other things well and you know like so, I said so register if you must but do it when, when you're completely Please, sure about of, yeah. what you want to give to whom okay yeah, fair enough yeah. now let me get back to property and how the game changes there so what happens with property is once you die hmm. even if you had a joint holding with somebody on the property it does not become that person's share automatically. So if A and B were holding a property together, if mm. A goes away, mm. then A's share has to be inherited to somebody. B does not become the owner Automatic of everything, owner. Okay. which happens in a bank account or a mutual fund or somewhere else or shares. Okay. It's possible there, but doesn't happen in real estate. So in real estate, A, you have to nominate. You have, you know, it's surprising a lot of people, I mean, not a lot of people, thousands of people in their societies have not nominated anybody. They've not filed a nomination. That's the least you could do to safeguard your property. Mm. Because the society's job is to just nominate and not really challenge the title of the property. Mm -hmm. They must transfer it. And then the title could be taken care of by the family in the court and go to the registrar and get the title changed and all of that. That is the owners of the family. Mm -hmm. But at least you've nominated. So that is like part one of the story. And part two of the story is you please buy property with somebody if that is possible. If it is not possible, then that's the only little piece from which you will have to go through the pro pro procedure of probate or letters of administration as the case might be. Okay. But for everything else, financially speaking, you can pretty much, while you're living, sort out everything. Um, Anuj, but uh, some more clarity on uh, real estate and property. So if you could just explain the whole step to us, uh, how does one ensure that whatever immovable property they have yeah. is uh, passed on very smoothly and cleanly to whoever is, uh, you know, is the intended here? You know, the process is really, uh, you have to apply. Most of the, most of the states in our country insist for something called as a probate. So the executioner of the will has to apply to the high court, mm. uh, to the court, mm. and court issues something called as a probate. Okay. And uh, it's basically a process where they put an advertisement uh, and notice uh, saying that, look, uh, this property has come to us or these assets have come to us or this will has come to us and whether there is any challenge. Okay. If there's no challenge, a probate is issued. So when you go to a registrar's office to get the property transferred to you, they'll generally insist on a probate. Okay. Uh, you just with a paper of uh, will, if you go to them, they'll not uh, transfer the property. So, okay. so this is the probate process, mm -hmm. and uh, uh, that is the point where most of the challenges are made. So, but uh, I mean, uh, I'm just curious. Could this also be a lot of malify challenges just come up? Oh, ab absolutely, all the time, and therefore it yeah. becomes so important to do the will well. You mm -hmm. know, we spend so much time earning money. So I think some time, is all, some time is also required to spend. Okay, got that point. Uh, so on that note, we'll take another quick break. On the other side, we also have some viewers who've written in some questions on the concept of a will and some of their own queries. We'll answer them when we come back.